Welcome to The Author Show, where we feature new authors and books from fiction to self-help and everything in between. You'll find it all at theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. And now let the show begin. Hi, this is Linda Thompson, and I'm your host for The Author Show. While the world succumbs to the horrors of a great flu epidemic, a woman vows to protect the perilous fate of a bird whose existence manipulates the destiny of man. Wow, now that's a bit unsettling. So our book is Quick Fall of Light by author Sherida Woodley. Sherida joins us to share more. Sherida, welcome to the author show. Thank you, Linda, so much for asking me to show up today. And I consider it a very timely interview considering what's going on in our world. So I look forward to talking to you. Well, Sherry, will you please share a quick overview of Quick Fall of Light? It is the story of a pandemic, a bird flu pandemic that takes place in our world. There are similarities to our time. And uh, I chose to delve into this subject thinking that fiction might be the best way to approach a pandemic. I think it was Albert Camus who said fiction is the lie through which we tell the truth. And that was my objective with QuickFall. Well, we are now six months into the COVID-19 pandemic, and yet your book was published prior to this current crisis. Where did you get the inspiration for your story? Well, I was a medical transcriptionist for about 20 years in the Spokane region. And I had worked for a number of hospitals, one of which was probably key in coming to this conclusion. I was working with a pathology lab there doing transcription and running across various diseases that just, frankly, scared me to death. One of them that came up during the time I was there was mad cow disease. And it had a transfer over into the human population shortly after I left that hospital, but they were preparing for it. And eventually it did arise in the U.S. It was very short-lived at the time, but extremely unsettling. And the fact that it had transferred from cattle into humans was something that just kind of stayed in my mind. So I think the seeds of this book were planted probably in the mid-90s when I was working as a pathology transcriptionist. Very interesting. So who do you think would be the ideal reader for Quick Fall of Light? I think the ideal reader would be anyone who's interested in the people of a pandemic, not so much the specifics of a pandemic, people's reactions the sense of isolation that comes with a pandemic, the fear that goes with it, although that's probably less of a keynote in this book than a lot of other things, which is a sense of adventure. Some of these characters have got to carry on with their lives despite the devastation. In fact, they all do. And I think that speaks to people right now. They're trying to deal with something they've never experienced in 100 years. So this is a new generation experiencing a deadly virus. Absolutely. So Quick Fall of Light is your first novel. Who would you say influenced your writing the most? Well, I think there are two, and I mention them in describing the book. The first one is Rachel Carson, who was, of course, an environmentalist, maybe the first one. She had a lot to do with my youth. I remember reading Silent Spring when I was about 12 years old with my mother, and the book left a lasting impact the idea of losing birds to indiscriminate poisoning was just something I I could never shake the idea of it. And the second author was Michael Crichton, who, very opposite of Rachel Carson, but had also a strong grip on recognizing what we were all facing in the immediate future. And as we know, some of his stories were very topical. I was very impressed with his ideas. I wasn't as impressed with his writing, but I, 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 was, I, was, I was absolutely uh, taken in by his ideas and his objective in telling story. Well, if you were to compare Quick Fall of Light with any other, what would that other book be? Well, that's a, that's a good question, Linda. I would say there are overtones of an old book written by Gene Stratton Porter called The Harvester. There is not a pandemic in that story, but there is a man working very hard 
to use nature to his benefit to save a young woman in the story. And this has a close parallel to that. I was also very fascinated with Pale Horse, Pale Rider by Catherine Ann Porter when I wrote Quickfall and her concepts of fever dreams and how she approached writing that in a way that someone just listening or just reading would understand the components of a fever dream without getting lost in the enormity of it. And I, I, I wanted to bring that into the story. I wanted there to be an element of the fantastic to the story. You've written a rather suspenseful story. Would you say it's a thriller, science fiction, paranormal, or something else? Many people referred to it as an echo thriller, which was a term I'd never heard of before. And I guess I would go with that more than any other description. What is so special about this one pound bird that is the center of your story? The bird, first of all, the passenger pigeon, has been extinct for over 100 years now. Well-known extinction, a very graphic, very sad. And to be able to keep the bird alive for those hundred years was, to me, the suspense of the story. It's the crooks of the mystery. That was the specialness of picking the passenger pigeon. Hmm. Will there be a sequel to Quick Fall of Light, or are you working on something different now? Well, I, <laughs> I've probably about exhausted my ideas about pandemics, <laughs> especially <laughs> now living through one. <laughs> But in my youth, I was a pilot. I was a private pilot. So one of the things that always fascinated me was the inspiration to do it, which was Amelia Earhart. So I've written kind of a, a hybrid. It's a biography slash memoir that I'm currently querying about Amelia Earhart's life and just a little bit about mine as we kind of compared as flyers. Very interesting. So now I want to know, do your central characters, Josephine and Gary, resemble real people or are they merely a product of your imagination? I think they are probably more imaginary than, than real. Stearns has, uh, Gary Stearns has a, a component of more of realism to me because logging is very prevalent in the state of Washington. I was married to a logger at one time and it was more an experience that I understood. Josie's a little bit more ethereal, and it took quite a bit for me to construct her. While you're writing, what is more important to you, character or plot? Character. I'm very much interested in how a person will respond to a certain situation. I think part of that comes from maybe even training as a, as a pilot. What does your book title mean in relation to the story? Well, it came about through many hours of writing, it, it didn't develop right away. I knew the word light would be in the title. I just did not know in what way. And finally, I envisioned passenger pigeons in their structured flight, which was extremely adept. They could fly at 70 miles an hour. So I saw them in kind of a fall, kind of a descending unison, almost like a murmuration. And then the idea occurred to me. What would you say has been the most rewarding experience for you since publishing your book? Meeting other people has by far been one of the most beautiful, I guess you could call after effects, everything other authors to very interested readers to people within the publishing industry who have shown kindness and interest and it's opened many doors for me. Sherry, I loved your book cover. Is that a graphic representation of an actual passenger pigeon? Yes. Yes, it is. In fact, the publisher, who was Grey Dog Press at that time, was very interested in getting that right. And uh, I had described it to him, the bird. I was very interested in, in having the bird on the cover. And he was very interested in having the woman's hand with the vial on the cover. So he found an excellent illustrator and the cover came to pass. Well, he did a great job there. So is there a primary message or maybe a moral of the story in Quick Fall of Light that you would like readers to remember? That's changed, I think, with this pandemic. I think the, the overall message that I would want anyone to know is that as apocalyptic as something may seem, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to turn out that way. I think recovery is, is a process, just like the pandemic itself. And 
there will always be a sense of positiveness to come out of any situation. It certainly comes out in this story. What a wonderful message. So now I'd like to ask, will you please read a short excerpt from Quick Fall of Light for our listeners? I would be happy to. This is uh, toward the end of the book. The characters are happen to be in Montana at this place in a campground. They're surviving there for a short period of time. And Josie has a chance to have a very close encounter with a very special passenger pigeon who is part of the story, a very integral part of the story. And I will read part of this. She withdrew her hand and waited for him to fly. But all that happened was stillness, forthright, something chosen. Slowly, she put her empty hand below him, feeling the soft buzz of down, an emotionless leg, then perceptible, steady breathing. Gem X, she said, can I hold you? He didn't move. It was as if the consent had been there in the darkness and would stay, if she could just keep her balance. She braced against the wall, recalling the dreams of the last two days. The sharp outline of his flock huddled in death, packed and sealed in plastic until someone could study their remains. Rows and then a warehouse full of serum broken from cases, poured into hazardous waste that would someday seep into the sound. All his work, all his living destroyed. He relaxed, his body filling her hands as though nesting in a human cup, lighter than she expected and somehow condensed as if he'd measured her capabilities and rearranged himself to suit her. He didn't tremble now, and she could feel the antenna rub against her fingers. It was slight as a tie wrap, but inflexible, banded around his leg without a crease. Legs shouldn't have to grow around such things, she said, fiddling with the apparatus. The bird shifted and began the head bob he started earlier, withdrawing, swerving to the side, then settling his beak in a keel-like furrow, center breast, where it disappeared in mottled plumage. When she began to pull on the antenna, he went through the head maneuvers one more time. But instead of coming to rest at the end of the circle, he pecked her hard, right on the chin, then flew into the anonymity above the bathhouse. There was nothing, no sign he'd been near her, just the dwindling warmth of her hands and the impatient sting. He'd slapped her, she thought, maybe because of his pain or maybe because he realized she wasn't Robert. Oh, my gosh. Um, That had me on the edge of my seat. So now I want to know, Sherry, where can we learn more about you and where can we purchase Quick Fall of Light? You can certainly reach me or at least access the website that I have, which is under SheridaWoodley.com. And on that site, our various explanations, particularly of Quick Fall, also the other projects that I'm currently working on, one in particular that is completed. I've also put a couple of links to ways that the book can be obtained on that site, and I will be updating that site as we go along through other things that I'm doing uh, concurrently with writing a book. Sherry, will you please spell your website link for us? S-H-E-R-R-I-D-A-W-O-O-D-L-E-Y dot com. Thank you. We've been talking with Sherida Woodley, author of Quick Fall of Light. Sherry, I've really enjoyed our chat today, and I want to thank you for spending time with us. You've written a book that uh, you weren't thinking about COVID-19 when you wrote it, but it certainly is apropos now. So I do hope that you'll want to come back again when you publish your next book. Linda, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been such a pleasure to, to talk to you and to share some of this story. And uh, absolutely, I'll be back in touch as we go through time. Woodley delves into mystery as deep as the Northwestern rainforest to capture an intriguing story of pandemic and murder, apocalypse and redemption, a story that compels vital and necessary reflection. That was a review for Quick Fall of Light. And if you'd like to read Sherida's book, please go to SheridaWoodley.com and order your copy today. And when you finish, don't forget to post your review. And please share this interview with your friends so that they too may become acquainted with our author. And remember, the author show may be accessed at any time at theauthorshow.com. 
Plus, selected interviews can also be found on major platforms such as Amazon Fire TV, the Roku channel, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, and many more. Whether you're an author who would like to be featured or a reader in search of new books, the authorshow.com is a really great place to start. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. Find out more about authors and their work at theauthorshow.com. Theauthorshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.